We are SC. We are SC. We are SC. We are SC. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to say thank you, graduates, for that, that warm welcome. Will Ferrell, why Will Ferrell? I hate Will Ferrell. I hate him. I hate his movies. He's gross. Although he's much better looking in person. Has he lost weight? Today I have also received an honorary doctorate for which I would like to give my thanks to President Max Nikias. And then there's me. Will Ferrell whose achievements include running naked through the city of Montrose in old school. Montrose in the house, all right. Running around in my underwear and racing helmet, thinking that I'm on fire as Ricky Bobby in Talladega Nights. Running around in elf tights, eating gum off the ground. and playing cowbell. I think my fellow doctorates would agree, based on our achievements, we are all on equal footing. I want the university to know that I do not take this prestigious honor lightly. I've already instructed my wife and my children from this point on, they have to address me as Dr. Farrell. There will be no exceptions especially at our children's various school functions and when opening Christmas presents. <laughs> Yay, we got the new Xbox. Thank you, Dad. I mean, Dr. Farrell. I've been informed that I can now perform minimally invasive surgery <laughs> at any time or any place, even if people don't want it. In fact, I am legally obligated to perform minor surgery at the end of today's ceremonies, or my doctor's degree will be revoked. So if anyone has a sore tooth that needs to be removed or wants hernia surgery, please meet me at the surgery center. By surgery center, I mean a windowless van I have parked over by the Coliseum. The next time I'm flying and they ask if there's a doctor on board, I can now confidently leap to my feet and scream, I'm a doctor, what can I do? Yes, no problem. I can absolutely deliver that baby. Hopefully it will be on United Airlines. In which I will immediately be subdued and dragged off the aircraft which we all know will be recorded on someone's iPhone and put on YouTube, you will hear me say, call Max Nakias, president of USC. He told me I'm a doctor. Rest assured, President Nakias, I will use my powers wisely. The institutions to which I have spoken at previously include Bryman School of Nursing, DeVry Technical School, <laughs> Debbie Dutson School of Trucking, <laughs> University of Phoenix, <laughs> Hollywood DJ Academy, <laughs> and Trump University. <laughs> I'm still waiting to get paid from Trump University. In fact, it turns out I owe Trump University money for the honor to speak at Trump University. All of you have excelled in various courses of study. All of you, except for four students. And you know exactly who you are. If you would care to stand and reveal yourself right now, that would be great, those four students. There's one. Two, three, four, five, six, eight, more like 20. Very honest of you. I then, I then would have asked this person from the future, does that mean I graduated? <laughs> yes, you did, 
says the person from the future. What else can you tell me about the future? The future person turns to me and says, I can tell you that you will become one of the most famous alumni of this university, mentioned in the same breath as John Wayne, Neil Armstrong, and Rob Kardashian. You will be referenced in rap songs from Kanye West to Lil Wayne to Drake. Nas will say, get me real bonkers like Will Ferrell on Cat Tranquilizer. <laughs> Is that it, I would ask? Yes, that sums it up. <laughs> Except one other thing. In the future, there will be something called Shake Shack. It will start in New York and then come to LA, and people will wait hours for a milkshake. That is definitely good, but not that good that you should wait two hours. <laughs> Those of us with sports information degrees are an elite group. We are, we are like the Navy SEALs of USC graduates. There are very few of us, and there was a high dropout rate. So I would literally leave my job if I knew friends were attending class close by and crash a lecture while in character. My good buddy Emil, who's also here today, Emil, in the house. Emil told me one day that I should crash his thematic options literature class one day. So I cobbled together a janitor's outfit, complete with work gloves, safety goggles, a dangling lit cigarette, and a bucket full of cleaning supplies. And then I proceeded to walk into the class, interrupting the lecture, informing the professor that I'd just been sent from physical plant to clean up a student's vomit. <laughs> True story. What Emil neglected to tell me was that the professor of his class was Ronald Gottesman, a professor who co-edited the Norton Anthology of American Literature. Needless to say, a big time guy. A month after visiting my, my friend's class as the janitor, I, I was walking through the campus when someone grabbed me by the shoulder and it was Ron Gottesman. I thought for sure he was gonna tell me to never do that again. Instead, what he told me was that he loved my barging in on his class and that he thought it was one of the funniest things he'd ever seen and would I please do it again? So, on invitation from Professor Gottesman, I would barge in on his lecture class from time to time as the guy from physical plant, coming by to check on things, and the professor would joyfully play along. One time I got my hands on a power drill, and I just stood outside the classroom door operating the drill. <laughs> for a good minute. <laughs> Unbeknownst to me, Professor Gottesman was wondering aloud to his class, I wonder if we're about to get a visit from our physical plant guy. <laughs> I then walked in as if on cue and the whole class erupted in laughter. My stand-up act was based mostly on material derived from watching old episodes of Star Trek. My opening joke was to sing the opening theme to Star Trek. And after moving back to L.A., there were many a night where, in my L.A. apartment, I would sit down to a meal of spaghetti topped with mustard with only $20 in my checking account and I would think to myself, oh well, I can always be a substitute school teacher. And now I'm, I'm just realizing how many people are watching me right now and it's scary. <laughs> can you please look away while I deliver the rest of the speech? <laughs> After my first show, one review referred to me as the most annoying newcomer of the new cast. One woman wrote to me and said she hated my portrayal of George W. Bush. 
It was mean-spirited, not funny, and besides, you have a fat face. <laughs> As for my fat face, you are 100% right. I'm trying to work on that. Please don't hesitate to write me again if you feel like I've lost some weight in my face. <laughs> How dare you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Even now, I still lose out on parts that I want so desperately. My most painful example was losing the role of Queen Elizabeth in the film, The Queen. <laughs> Apparently, it came down to two actors, myself and Helen Mirren. The rest is history. Dame Helen Mirren, you stole my Oscar! <laughs> hey, Matthias, get your hands off Axel right now. Stop it. I can see you, okay? Dr. Farrell's watching you. <laughs> and imagine me. Literally picture my face singing this song gently into your ear. <laughs> if I should stay, I would only be in your way. So I'll go, but I know I'll think of you every step of the way. And I Seventeen, and I.